Hey everyone, welcome back to Miranda Patron Art. I just want to start off by saying that I am so overwhelmed with the love you have all been sharing in the comments on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. Um, you guys are awesome. I just so appreciate the fact that um, I could share something with you all just about the health issues that I've been having and I did not get a single negative comment comments about anything. You guys are so supportive and encouraging and I just want to tell you thank you from seriously the bottom of my heart. It means a ton. So without further ado, let's hop into our latest tutorial here, which is going to be one of the coffee mug latte wood cutouts. Um, I found them last year at the Dollar Tree stores and I honestly couldn't find them anywhere else. I bought one pack and that was it. So this year they are out again this fall, uh, 2023, and I got some more to do some different designs this year and check them out. So without further ado, let's hop into our latte mug tutorial. All right, so this is what they look like. They're just little wood cutouts. And last year I did a couple different kind of metallic designs. I used some multimedia and grabbed some little like scrapbooking items and little gadgets and beads and whatnot and created them that way. And we made some lovely ornaments. So this time I am just going to straight up paint a mandala on this one. There were some creative paint spills last time, but we're going to get started with the painting of the mandala on this one I have here today. Okay, so I took my etcher and I just kind of delineated the top here on where I wanted the top of my mug to begin and just kind of separate where I'm going to put the cream on top and the actual design on the base, which would be our mug. So I am just going to show you all various tools here. This is one of the angled um, dot styluses that I have in my shop. Um, I actually see a lot of people selling them now, so you should be able to get them anywhere at this point. And I'm just going to dip that in white. And we're going to kind of create a little swirl at the top here. So I will say, if you want your paint to drag out a little smoother, you can see there's a couple spots where it bleeds on mine. It's because I didn't varnish over the black background that I put on this first. So you can do that because it will soak into the wood um, otherwise like mine is doing. So it's just a little tip if you don't want to have to deal with the extra, um, I guess, potential hassle <laughs> of the paint bleeding into the wood cutout. So. We're going to do a nice long swirl at the top to kind of put the, the cream on the top here. And then I just kind of fill it in with white. So you can do swipes with this tool. I can use paintbrushes. You can use any tool you want. But we're just kind of filling in the top um, with the white. So we'll do dots. We'll do a couple swipes like the we put above. And so these ones I wanted a little bit smaller. So I just grabbed a smaller tool. And this will put less paint on the tool, so the swipe will be a little bit thinner, more narrow. Um, but you'll see, once you start playing around with your tools, if you're just starting out, you can kind of see the difference that each tool will make. So I have not done this with any of the acrylic rods. I don't really think that would work well, but as far as every other tool out there, because I use the paintbrushes and these tools to teach, um, but there's also the silicone tools. I mean, there's just so many tools out there. Dining Company, Mark's Tools. I'm not sure if they, I think the Dining Company does Yeah, have some ball styluses and some ones that come to a point that should work on this as well. Um, but you can see it's very random in the top. You're just kind of filling in multiple sizes of the dots to kind of create the cream look. So this is the etcher tool that I often use for micro dotting or kind of sketching out because after you varnish over if I've sketched out like the line where this cup ends and the cream started it will just kind of erase as you varnish it so I you can use the edger tool I can use a paintbrush you know there's many different different tools that you can use to do this so don't feel constrained to purchasing certain tools or Getting different ones, if you see people using other ones, you can use what you're comfortable with. 
So I'm just staying within the top part of this and just kind of haphazardly, really. So there's large, small dots, just kind of filling it in. And you can kind of create some depth. There have been some where I've done, I add a little bit of beige or I put a little bit of gray. Um, you can do colored, you could do sprinkles. I mean, there's so many options for this that I obviously can't show in one tutorial, but just to give you some ideas on how to create your own and make it your own design. If you want more color, you can make a hot chocolate with whipped cream on top and do sprinkles everywhere. So don't feel confined to doing the one design. This is just one option of what you could do. And it doesn't matter if they overlap. I mean, a lot of times with doing the mandalas, people like to have it exact and separated and keep spacing. But for the top part of this, we don't need that. So this is raspberry. And it is a multi-surface. So you can see that it's kind of got a sheen already with it as you put the paint down. And that's because it will self-cure. So it is a little shinier. You don't have to put a varnish over it. I just happen to really like this color raspberry and I don't have it in any of the matte acrylics. So I am just going to grab it and use that to put some little swipes up here at the top to kind of delineate the area of our cup and then the handle. So this one too, uh, my camera is not working on my in my studio. So this one I'm doing on my phone. So it tries to autofocus. So forgive me if some of them go blurry in and out. But also I'm still getting used to the size of the screen and where I'm I'm at in front of the camera. So we're making it work with what we have. But I was just excited to show you guys that these are out again this fall and just some of the things that you can do different ideas. I'm just kind of filling in, I guess in my brain, this kind of fills in the extraneous extra spots that kind of um, would make this not a round area. Does that make sense? So like a lot of mandalas are on circles um, and you can do them any shape. We've done ovals, we've done square bunches, um, but this just kind of fills in the mug a little bit so that I can kind of keep to that uh, circular mandala shape. So I'm just showing you some of the different tools you could use here. I just eyeball my center, but obviously if you want it more perfect, feel free to measure. Uh, some of the companies out there have silicone mats that you can overlay this that have stencils on them. So you can get exactly where you want your center to be and then draw lines with it. But So that first center green, I used a paintbrush. And it's probably a little bit larger than the three millimeter, the largest dotting tool on the stylus pack. And then that was foliage green. And now I'm on desert turquoise and we're just starting out our mandala shape. So I like to keep my symmetry by just doing a plus sign first. And then at the 45 degree angles, putting the other dots in after I have the plus sign put in. So again, you can use various brushes. I mean, you could even see that one I just showed is pretty split. See the frayed ones? I should cut those off, but I was being lazy today and just kind of grabbed what I grabbed. But you can make dots with so many different things. I mean, mechanical pencils, Q-tips, there's everything you can dip in paint <laughs> that you can think of. So I'm just putting those dots in between the desert turquoise and now I'm going to grab my silicone dotting tool. This one makes the ovals on one end and then the hard plastic other end makes little petal shapes. So this is blue mist. These paints are all from deco art. I've never really had to stray much actually from their colors and their paint line. I'm very happy with the consistency of their paints and they have great colors. And you can see I got off the screen a little there, but again, this is blue mist and we're making the large ovals. So it's the end with the actual silicone piece on the, this tool. But if you want ovals and you don't have this tool, the erasers that the kids put on the end of their pencils, the like 
odd shaped ones those will make ovals you can use a flat brush you can use a screwdriver there's so many things a flathead screwdriver um those will make ovals as well and I know I've done bunches of videos on all these but I just feel like I haven't given much information lately so I'm putting it out there for you all so one thing too with the mandalas is kind of checking to see if you have space so say I didn't have space for this oval I would have just left it as a quad mandala and we would have just done a four piece design and just filled it in from there but we can kind of tuck these ovals in here for our spacing for a few more for this mandala and actually each element you add for your symmetry just double check that the tool seems like it's going to fit there or you know you can downsize the dot downsize the element downsize the oval whatever it is that you're putting in the space just to make sure that it fits that's one of the reasons too I teach painting a background on a lot of your items just so you have that to fall back on in case you don't want the the element that you've put in you can always go back scrape off the paint and then paint it like this one's black background you could just go back over it with black There's our blue mist ovals, and then I'm going to grab, this is a little bit lighter green. I don't think you can tell much from the video colors it looks like, but it is called grasshopper green, so it's just a shade lighter. I'm sorry, inchworm, inchworm green. It's just a shade lighter than the foliage green, so you can even take your foliage green, add a little bit of white to it, and then you get the next shade lighter And again, this is just the angled paintbrush. It's called the angled spot detailer. And I grab that desert turquoise again. And the thing with brushes is sizing, to get your sizing is mostly about pressure. So pressure will spread out the brush, less pressure, smaller dot, more pressure, bigger dot. So if you're trying to start working with the brushes, that's one little tip to help you out there. Okay, so now this is the silicone oval tool, but this is the other end of the handle. So this will make little mini petals. And I just want to show, I, I press it down, but I kind of rock it back and forth so that both ends touch so you get both points make that little petal so it's kind of like an oval but they look more like a petal shape depending on the thickness of your paint this paints a little more fluid but we're putting those just above the other green dot here and again I apologize for my knuckles but this is my phone camera <laughs> so different placement here on trying to get the video for y'all so you can see but so we're just putting a petal at the top of each of those elements with the green dot and the two side blue dots you can see how easy and quick it is to just start filling out a mandala you know adding different colors adding different shapes and you basically just start in the center and work your way out One thing I want to point out as well, I spoke earlier about the bleeding um, into the wood. So you can kind of see the feathering on the edges of these, at least on my camera here. The feathering of the edges of some of the paint, that is because I didn't seal it. So if you seal the black first, you'll have a much smoother surface to work on. If you don't mind the kind of whimsical, feathery, <laughs> drawn out look, that's, that's what I have on this. And after I varnish it, it doesn't look as prominent. So this color is not white. On the screen, it looks like white, but it's actually light, 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 light sage. So it's just the lightest tint of green, I guess, is so light, though. It, it's not showing here on the screen. 
But you could use white, beige. I mean, if you were looking to create similar color design, then you could use ones that match closer to that. But obviously you can go for your own color scheme. Maybe that tint is a little better. So this Peridot, as you can see, has been well loved. I try to use it sparingly just because I enjoy it so much. I tend to be addicted to the metallics, but we're just going to go in with the petal here, but you can see the size difference. So the blue mist was the silicone side, and this is the plastic hard handled end that makes the petals. So it's a considerable size difference, but they pair really nicely together to do top dots. Again, I'm just rocking it back and forth to get both sides to touch. And you can see the consistency difference with this because this is one of the extreme sheen paints. It's a little heavier duty. So it's just a little bit of a different shape. You can still kind of see that petal, but it's more of a smaller oval depending on the consistency of your paint. And I'm going to grab some fruit punch here just because I feel like that raspberry needs some sort of a highlight here. So I'm going to grab the fruit punch and one of the ball styluses. This is probably one of the medium sized ones. And I'm just going to come in between here and just give it a little highlight along here. We'll do the same on the other side. Guys are doing awesome. I know I spoke kind of fast with this and I did kind of paint faster on this one, but that's, you know, the fun of just sitting down and creating one full piece in a short amount of time. And you have this creation that you just completed. It's kind of cathartic, it's a little fulfilling, you know, where you just finished it off as opposed to weeks of painting something. It's nice to do something every now and then where you finish it fairly quickly. Going to highlight again on the bottom here, the fruit punch in between my swipes. This one actually bled together, so this is an option to hide if your paint bleeds into one another because I wasn't patient in letting it dry. But there is our little mug. Let's give it a nice green dot with the inchworm in the middle. And it's done. So I had done a couple other ones. That blue one came out pretty nicely as well. And uh, yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you are inspired to go try to get some of these of your own. If not, I think I'm going to do a giveaway soon, which will have some of these mugs in it. All right. Take care, y'all. It was so great being back with you. And again, thank you so much for the awesome encouragement. You guys are awesome. I love you all. Have a great day.